This right here is one of the cheapest RX 5700 non XP that you can buy off AliExpress. And we bought this for about 194 New Zealand dollars. I'll put some US dollars equivalent in here. Anyway, let's see how this thing goes. But first, hit that like button and let's go unbox this thing. So this is the ELSA RX 5700 non-XT. Let's talk about the design. It comes in a really pure black theme. It looks really simple but sleek. It comes with two fans which I believe is 100 millimeters. However, the cooler looks very familiar. And this is because it's exactly an XFX RX 5700 Ultra without the XFX branding. For our display outlets, we've got one HDMI 2.0 and three DisplayPorts 1.4. It needs an 8-pin and a 6-pin power connector. Now, this is really interesting. We do have those LED lights in there to indicate if it's working properly. Now, this specific graphics card looks maybe refurbish. Uh, not sure if you can see this, but if you look closely at the fans, it does have a little scratches there. And once you look at the copper pipes and heat sinks, you can actually see that they're also spray painted. So yeah, that's um interesting. One other thing that I need to comment on is the box. Now, it's a cheap graphics card. Also comes in a really cheap box. The RX 5700 is part of the RDNA 1 architecture. It was released on July 7, 2019. Basically the 7th day of the 7th month with 7 nanometers. It comes with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM 256-bit memory interface. The stock RX 5700 comes with the specifications of a game frequency of big game clocks of 1625 MHz. This one comes with 1650 MHz according to its GPU Z. The boost frequency, boost clock is 1725 MHz. And on our specifications with GPU Z, we also have 1725 megahertz now let's test this card in a real world scenario in this case we'll be running warzone and see how this card performs on different settings now disregard all the fps numbers for now instead focus on the gpu power the temperature and the gpu clock speeds we'll be doing a separate video on the rx 5700 by itself so if you're keen on that hit the subscribe button anyway let's start with the stock settings as always we're testing in el masra which is a graphic demanding map and this is in plunder mode which has a lot of players on now on stock settings in game our gpu temperature seems to be around 55 to 56 and the gpu power is between 105 to 110 and this is usually at around 105 watts which is pretty good gpu clock is roughly at 1680 megahertz and our fan speed is at 1570 rpm but when we look at our hardware info uh, we've got our gpu max temperature at 59 memory junction temperature is at 68 and our hotspot temperature is at 69 the gpu clock the max is at 1690 obviously we haven't seen this in game and our power consumption is at 117 watts roughly now a lot of these higher readings are when you load the game 
not actually in game because you can see the difference here moving on to auto undervolting and we do have like a few failed attempts to do this from stock settings we have to restart the computer before you can actually activate auto undervolt in game the gpu temperature is between 54 to 55 a gpu power is roughly between 97 to 105 mostly at around 100 watts gpu clock is roughly the same as our stock settings at 16 70 megahertz maybe slightly lower and the fan speed remain the same 15 70 rpm however when we look at hardware info a gpu max temperature is recorded at 58 memory junction temperature is at 66 and hotspot temperature is at 66 as well the gpu clock the max is at 1682 and gpu power is at 121.59 watts this is the maximum and as i said this is something that you probably get while you're trying to load the game and there's a big difference where you're actually in game we've also tried manually under volting this card we have set the maximum millivolts to 900 however in game our graphics temperature is around 55 however the gpu power seems to slightly increase at around 109 to 117 this is mostly at 110 watts the gpu clock also has dropped down to 16 70 megahertz and fan speed is uh, slightly increased at 1598 when we look at our hardware info the gpu max temperature has decreased at 57 memory junction temperature is at 66 which is roughly as our auto undervolting but hotspot temperature is down to 64 likewise the gpu clock the maximum has also dropped down to 1676 megahertz however gpu power recorded still is at 121 watts which is ironic that it's quite higher compared to our stock settings okay our last setting is the auto overclocking feature from the radeon driver so we can do this by just clicking this one here now this one seems to have really good results although our gpu temperature in game has increased to around 58 to 59 the gpu power as well is roughly between 110 to 115 watts which is mostly at 112 watts so a little bit of difference there although so our GPU clock has now bumped to 1730 megahertz. Fan speed has also increased slightly, now going all the way up to 1600 RPM. On hardware info, our max temperature is at 60 degrees Celsius, which is not bad. Memory junction temperature is at 70, hotspot is at 71. Now our GPU clock, which is the maximum, is at 1735 megahertz. This is 135 megahertz over the stock. Our 5700 or roughly 6.76 percent gpu power is only at 122 watts which is the maximum that we've recorded during this run which is actually pretty good and when we compare stock auto undervolt and manually undervolting you can see that maybe the auto undervolting is probably the much more stable one in here you can compare all the gpu power and gpu clock here alongside their temperatures which is uh, yeah and it's probably obvious that the auto undervolt setting is the best choice here and when you compare all three the stock auto undervolt and auto overclock it's pretty obvious as well that the auto overclock is probably your best choice it's slightly higher in temperatures but not that high slightly higher in gpu power but also not that high but it gives you about 20 percent more performance compared to the other settings so i would probably lean towards this now even if you look at the hot start temperature it's still pretty good at 71 degrees celsius on auto overclock now thermal limits for the rx 5700 non xt is at 110 degrees celsius for the hotspot temperature which is too far away obviously you could squeeze some more of this by manually overclocking this card however we don't cover that in here because the results would vary depending on the quality of silicon you get for 102 us dollars the elsa rx 5700 non xt is actually a pretty good card i would definitely recommend this if you want the best budget cards out there with an amazing overall performance i put a link in the description where to buy this card in aliexpress and before you do that we've also got an rx 5700 xd lined up so if you're keen on that be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys on the next video